Hi everyone, uh, in these videos today I'm going to be going over the derivatives of circular functions. So there's going to be a couple of them that we just need to know to be able to um, differentiate these effectively. To actually start us off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove why uh, some of these circular functions have the rules that they do. So to start off with, I'm going to sketch y equals cos x. Okay, so let's say that we have that. Well, we know that it has a period of 2 pi, so I might put pi there and 2 pi there. And we know that the cos function starts up here and it's going to finish up there and it's going to have its minimum here. It's going to have x intercepts at pi on 2 and 3 pi on 2. And it's going to go something like this. There we are. Okay. So, first things first, in doing the derivative of these, well, remember the derivative is just the gradient, so we can see that there's a couple of key points on this where the gradient is going to be zero, and that's going to be at the turning points. So, right here, at the y-intercept, that has a gradient of zero, so I'll map it out there. Also, we have a gradient of zero at pi, just here. That's a turning point, so there's pi and map that point there. And the other place where we have a gradient of zero is this turning point here at 2 pi. So we can see it like that. Okay. The nice thing about this uh, particular function is that the angle that it makes right here as it passes through the x-axis is actually going to be 135 degrees. Um, so if we do 10 of 135 degrees, that's actually just negative 1. So the gradient at pi on 2 is just negative 1. I'm going to get a point down there. And at 3 pi on 2, it makes an angle of 45 degrees with the positive direction of the x-axis. And 10 of 45 degrees is just 1. So this here might be looking fairly familiar at this point. We can see that it's some kind of curve which is coming down here and then it goes up to some maximum and then it comes back down again. So what we can see is that the graph that was cos x when we differentiate it actually becomes negative sine x, okay? It's upside down but starting at the origin and the amplitude is just one still. So what I can conclude there is that the derivative of cos x is just equal to negative sine x. Should put brackets around there. But that's the first of our important rules. Now, I'm going to go over just a couple of others as well. So the derivative of sine x can be shown in much the same way, uh, but it actually just comes out to be cos x, which is quite convenient. I don't know how you would choose to remember these. Um, you know, personally, I always think of sine as being the nice function and cos being the not so nice function. So when we differentiate sine, it just becomes cos. It's straight up like a nice change, whereas cos being a bit nastier becomes negative sine, and that's just a bit more difficult to remember. Um, that's always been my way of thinking of it. The other one that we need to look at is tan x. So if we do the derivative of tan x, then that's actually just equal to sec squared x. Now, you may or may not have heard of sec at this point, um, but basically sec is just 1 over cos. So the third letter um, always tells you what it's going to be. Okay, so I'll just put down here that sec is equal to 1 over cos. Um, but, yeah, the, there is a proof for that as well, which I will go into in a later video. Um, basically, before watching that, I would recommend sort of going over how to use the quotient rule. Uh, but it is quite a nice proof. Anyway, that'll do for this video. Catch you next time.